Hi, my name is Lauren Tom, and I was born in Highland Park, Illinois. My parents were also born in Chicago, and my grandparents came over from China, a small village called Hoi Ping. They had had some friends in Chicago. My grandfather came over first, and he got a job as a busboy at a restaurant. And then he was going to make enough money to be able to send for my grandma. And it took so long that my grandma finally just came over by herself. <laughs> I started out as a dancer. You know, I was pretty shy, so I could express myself through dancing but not have to talk. I was in a dance company called the Hubbard Street Dance Company. The show A Chorus Line came through town and they were holding auditions. And I was 17 at the time. My friends all said, why don't you go? It can't hurt. And because I, we had heard that there was a part for a small Chinese girl in it. It was only supposed to be 4'10 and I was like, woohoo, I'm actually too tall because <laughs> I'm five feet, but that's close enough. So I went and they they took me. My friends were giving me advice to take acting lessons so that my career would last a lot longer because otherwise you're done by the time you're 35. And then I gradually moved over to just acting because I realized, hey, this is way easier on my knees. <laughs> so, uh, you know, actors can work all the way up till their 80s, 90s. So that's how that happened. My mom was always very supportive. She wanted to be an ice skater when she was little, but it wasn't, the arts were not supported at all in um, her family. They were looked down upon, really. And my, my dad um, felt the same way, but he took it a step further. He thought it was like being a prostitute. <laughs> so that was really not supportive. So my mom was really the only reason why I was allowed to go to New York because my dad had other plans for me. He wanted me to become a dental hygienist, get married to a nice Chinese doctor, and have lots of kids. I got a chorus line, and my father was going to drive my brother to Stanford because he got into business schools, and he was gonna drive him to California so my brother could have the car, and then he was going to fly from California to New York for my opening night, and he had a massive heart attack uh, right before they got in the car. So my dad didn't get to see me open on Broadway and that was really hard because it was just the most exciting thing that had ever happened to me and I was so young and so, um, you know, I, the show held my spot for me and then I flew back to Chicago for a couple of weeks and to just be with my family and then um, I went back to New York and, and opened and so somewhere up there I think he's probably proud of me from where I've come. I had a small part in a movie called Cadillac Man. It starred Robin Williams. I was playing a dim sum waitress. My grandma was this force of nature and had kind of a thick accent, but it made her absolutely hilarious and adorable. So I tried to actually copy the way she spoke and everybody just fell down laughing and expanded my part because Robin Williams and I were having such a good time improvising. Then The Tonight Show, Johnny Carson and Jay Leno, they saw the movie and they thought that I was some Chinese girl from New York Chinatown Street that they had just plucked and they wanted me to come on their show. So they flew me out to Los Angeles, you know, and uh, they, we did a really fun interview and they liked me so much they had me back again. And then I decided to just stay out there in LA because I had already gotten my acting chops in New York because after a chorus line I did a lot of plays. I think in theater the focus is less on how you look than what your essence is and what talent that you bring to the project. Whereas in LA, it's so much about film and television and it's a visual medium, so really they care mostly, 90, I'd say 90%, about how you look. I found that I couldn't go out for certain parts in LA in the beginning when I first got here because they would want, you know, a blonde. <laughs> My best girlfriend from when I was five years old is an avid reader and she called me up and said, you've got to read this book. I loved it and then sure enough, Disney decided to make the movie of the book. They held massive auditions across the country and lucky for me, the director, Wayne Wang, he is a very visual person and so he wanted to match up actresses that he felt really looked like they could be related. So he had all our pictures and he was mixing and matching like a jigsaw puzzle. And then he asked each one of us, what part in the book do you relate to the most? So I told him Lena St. Clair and that storyline had to do with her feeling invisible. And when I was a child, I kind of wanted to be invisible because I was being made fun of a bit and I was really shy. Wayne Wang felt like Franz Nguyen and I looked like we could be mother and daughter. We didn't know that it would strike such a chord with so many people from different cultures. 
I remember having mothers and daughters together come up or just the daughter saying, I saw it with my mother and it was really cathartic for us. You know, you guys were expressing things that we couldn't express in real life. That was the best part of the experience is getting that kind of feedback that we had really touched people because that's why we're in this. And hopefully if we can make some kind of transformation, that's the best thing possible. After Joy Luck Club, I got friends. One of the writer producers had seen me in Joy Luck Club and just really responded to me for some reason. They made a six episode arc for me. There was no one of color on that show yet. You know, young Asian girls would come up to me then and say, I've got someone to look at on TV now. She's cool because she's Ross's girlfriend. And so that was really exciting. I did a movie called Mr. Jones with Richard Gere. That wasn't a huge commercial hit, but that was a great part for me because I played someone who was manic depressive and I ended up killing myself. It was a real juicy part. And then Bad Santa was a comedy with Billy Bob Thornton and I had a blast doing that. And then I started to do television, other television series. I did one with David Allen Greer called Dag and I did a show called Men in Trees with Anne Heche. I stumbled into voiceover acting for a lot of cartoons. King of the Hill was my first job and that ended up lasting 12 years. Then once I was in that little circle, you tend to kind of get other jobs from that, Futurama and then a bunch of Saturday morning cartoons, Batman, Superman and all those. And it was just a wonderful way to supplement my career because it's still acting but you can go dress like a slob. <laughs> I had two kids so I was working all the way up to right till the time I gave birth. Um, I would, you know, I could play an old Jewish woman. I mean, I could, I could play like a five-year-old boy. So you can play like all different kinds of parts and it doesn't matter who you, you know, what you look like. A lot of actors I know have no problem with playing an immigrant and other actors felt like I will not do that. I think if the writing is based in truth, the Asian community tends to support it because they go, oh my gosh, that's my grandma. You know, that's exactly her. But like a white person might have written it that's just trying to use their imagination. Like, oh, I'm gonna go cook a dog, you know? Obviously, that's something I couldn't say, and then I would talk to the writer and say, actually, you know, we can't, we can't, you have to cut that line and replace it. But I think to just say across the board, I won't do parts with accents is really not helping anything or anybody. So I always felt like I tried to work with the, the writer of the script or the director, and usually people were so open to it because they, they want it to be the most real as possible. That's the whole point. When I was young, maybe I could kind of do the ingenue thing, but at that time, for Asians to be the lead as an ingenue, that wasn't really going to happen unless it was in theater, which, which actually did happen for me in theater. But in film, that's a tough sell. And, and then you add to it, you know, <laughs> that this might be just my own insecurity, but I mean, I'm five feet tall. You, you know what I mean? I'm not, like, gorgeous. So I had to kind of become the best actor I could possibly become and do as many different things as I could in order to stay working. So for young people going into the business, I think that's the best advice I can give is to be, to be the best you can be in acting, dancing, singing, voiceover, you know, writing, directing. You, you're going to have all different areas then that you can find a porthole to get into the community. It'll make your career longer. Tsai Chin and Nancy Kwan, those were the pioneers. That handful of people really paved the way for us. And then the cast of and crew of Joy Luck Club really paved the way for the generation right after us, Grace Park and all those people. And what she's doing right now, Grace Park, I mean, life just goes like this, you know, is paving the way for the next ones coming up. I mean, you know, it's, it's inspiring. I think it's getting better and better. I do.